Determine whether each number is prime or composite. A prime number is a natural number or counting number greater than one that has only two factors, one in itself. A prime number is also only divisible by one in itself. And here's a list of the first several prime numbers. A composite number is a natural number or counting number greater than one that has more than two factors. If a number is not prime, it is composite. And for review, if a and b are counting numbers and a times b equals n, then a and b are factors of n. a and b also divide evenly into n. The first number we are given is 15 because one times 15 equals 15. One and 15 are factors of 15. To determine additional factors of 15, we need to find two additional counting numbers to give a product of 15. And because three times five equals 15, three and five are also factors of 15, which means one, three, five, and 15 are factors of 15. 15 has more than two factors. 15 is composite. It is important to recognize we don't have to find all the factors of a given number to determine whether it's prime or composite. As soon as we find more than two factors, the given number is composite. The next number is 17 because one times 17 equals 17. One and 17 are factors of 17. To determine additional factors of 17, we need to find two additional counting numbers to give a product of 17. And because this is not possible, 17 only has two factors, one in itself, which means 17 is prime. The next number is 37. We know one times 37 equals 37, which means one and 37 are factors of 37. To determine additional factors of 37, we need to find two additional counting numbers to give a product of 37. Well, six times six is 36, not 37. It's not possible to find two additional counting numbers that give a product of 37, which means 37 only has two factors. One in itself, 37 is prime. Next, we have 81. One times 81 equals 81. And we should also be able to recognize that nine times nine is equal to 81. So now we know that one, nine, and 81 are factors of 81. 81 does have additional factors, but we don't have to find all the factors because we know 81 has more than two factors. 81 is composite. Remember the divisibility rule for three. If the sum of the digits is divisible by three, so is the number. Eight plus one is equal to nine because nine is divisible by three. It also divides 81. Three would also be a factor of 81. The last number is 127. Well, of course, you know one times 127 equals 127. When the numbers get larger, it becomes much more difficult to just find two additional counting numbers to give a product of the given number. So let's end by going through a step-by-step -step process to determine whether a number is prime or composite. The steps are outlined below where we test each of the primes in order to see if it is a factor of the number. To do this, we divide the given number by the prime number. If it has a remainder, it's not a factor. If the remainder is zero, it is a factor. We start with two and stop when the quotient is smaller than the divisor or when a prime factor is found. If the number has a prime factor, then it is a composite number. If it has no prime factors, then the number is prime. So we begin with 127, and we divide by the first prime, which is two. Well, we should recognize that two is not going to divide 127 because 127 is odd. But to go through the process, there are 63 twos and 127. 63 times two is equal to 126. We subtract, the remainder is one. Again, because we have a remainder, two is not a factor of 127. And notice here the quotient of 63 is not smaller than the divisor of two, which means 
we need to divide by the next prime, which is three. So now we have 127 divided by three. And there are four threes in 12. We subtract, bring down the seven. There are two threes in seven. Two times three is six, we subtract. Again, we have a remainder, which means three is not a factor of 127. But 42 is not less than three. We divide by the next prime, which is five. There are two fives in 12. Two times five is 10, we subtract. Bring down the seven. There are five fives in 27. Five times five is 25, we subtract. Again, we have a remainder, which means five is not a factor of 127. But because 25 is not less than five, we divide by the next prime, which means we now divide by seven. There's one seven in 12, subtract. Difference is five, bring down the seven. There are eight sevens in 57. Eight times seven is 56, we subtract. Again, we have a remainder. Seven is not a factor of 127 because 18 is not less than seven. We divide by the next prime, which is 11. There's one 11 in 12. One times 11 is 11, subtract. The difference is one. Bring down the seven. There's one 11 in 17. One times 11 is 11. Again, we have a remainder. The difference is six. 11 is not less than 11, which means we need to divide by the next prime, which is 13. And this will be the last prime we need to divide by. We need to determine how many 13s in 127, which I believe is nine. Nine times three is 27. Perform an exchange with the two. Nine times one is nine plus two is 11. We subtract, we have a remainder of 10, which is less than 13, so the nine is correct. But because we have a remainder, 13 is not a factor of 127. And now because nine is less than 13, we can stop. We now know 127 is prime because it only has two factors, one in itself. So this process can be time consuming, but when we have a large number, this is one way to be sure whether a number is prime or composite. Again, 127 is prime. I hope you found this helpful.